Starliner is not stuck. It just had some issues, and we're going to explain them today. This program is brought to you by a great group of Patreon subscribers. Go to our Patreon page to read more. Join our Patreon supporters and get exclusive content and product discounts. Because of the talk of the helium leak and thruster issues on Starliner, we are going to talk about the reentry control system of Gemini to get a better understanding of what is actually happening with Starliner. So for this issue of Spacecraft Guide, we are going to look at the switch over here called the RCS propellant switch or the reentry control system propellant switch. And when you click on it, it takes you to the reentry control system propellant switch for the uh, Gemini spacecraft. And you can see that this switch selects the A or B system for the propellant to use for propulsion of the re-entry control system. In this case, it's the RCS. And when we go to the general section, we see that the Gemini spacecraft is provided with an altitude and maneuvering control capability. The control capability is used during the entire spacecraft mission, but it contains the two systems, the spacecraft control accomplished by two rocket engine systems, the orbital attitude maneuvering system, the OAMS, and the re-entry control system. So if we look down here, the OAMS is right in this back area here in the equipment section and the retro section. So you can see that here is the cabin section. So the heat shield is right back here. So all of this needs to be jettisoned before you can re-enter into the Earth's atmosphere. Now, this is the same with the Starliner, and it happens to be the place where the thrusters, as you can see these right here, have an issue, and they needed to find out that problem. Now, this section also contains the thrusters, the thrusters you see, the fuel, the helium, and the fuel and oxidizers. Now the helium is used to uh, use to pressurize the system. And that is what we're going to show out and that the helium systems we're going to show how it squeezes every little bit of fuel it can out of the oxidizers. So that issue with the thruster on Starliner is not the first one that NASA has had. In fact, Gemini 8 had a thruster issue, which almost killed the astronauts until Neil Armstrong figured out that the thruster was stuck in the equipment retro section and jettisoned both. Boeing has the opposite issue where the thruster won't hot fire at high enough efficiency. And so getting as much data possible of, on that thruster is very important before NASA takes Starliner to the moon. It's like going to the test track to make sure your race car goes faster by increasing the speed until something breaks. They're just trying to get data to make sure that it'll work correctly. If you want to see the history of the RCS system and how it was developed, you just click here and you will see a history of the RCS system as it was developed for the X-15 and its progression onto the Apollo space program.
For our Patreon subscribers, including those free members, we are going into the normal operations to show you how it worked. And when you clicked on normal operations, thank you for supporting Spacecraft Interactive Virtual Museum at patreon.com slash SIVR Museum. Your support helps us create more tools to explain air spacecraft like Apollo, Gemini, the ISS, Space Shuttle, and now the spacecraft of Artemis. Every dollar you help or you spend helps us create these new tools to explain these spacecraft and the wonders that they are creating.